You're coming from Utala or Utawala, you're on the Eastern Bypass, you'll find some traffic as you get onto the junction with North Airport Road. After Embakasi, North Airport Road gets busy all the way to City Cabanas and that interchange that joins you into Mombasa Road. And then when you get to Mombasa Road, Imaradaima will be busy up the railways bridge into the Enterprise Interchange at General Motors. And then after that, it clears. When you get to South Sea, you'll find more traffic as you approach Bellevue, and then you will get more traffic as you approach Nyao Stadium Roundabout, into Bunyala Roundabout, into Hel into Uhuru Highway, up Railways Bridge, into Hele Selassie Roundabout. That also then applies to those who are using um, Aerodrome Road and those who are getting onto Lusaka Road through Langata Road. How is Langata Road itself looking? It's okay, apart from those sections we've talked about. Even Gong Road is look is okay until you get to Prestige, where you find a bit of traffic. Uh, Thika Super Highway it stretches all the way to near Outer Ring Road Junction, and Kiambu Road is going all the way to DCI headquarters. Limuru Road is moving, but it's getting busy around Karura area as you move up towards uh, uh, UN Avenue. Westlands towards town is okay, and a uh, James Kishiro Road is starting to look busy, but it is also moving. Anything that you think we need to talk about, tag us on X at Spice FM KE. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Conversation continues with Kasmo Mokaure, who is an activist. We are talking about the accountability that the youth have been demanding of government. Kasmo, we talk about youth. So it started off, you know, just like uh, what we saw in March, which was the femicide yes. movement, the end femicide uh, march. People just came because there was something they were agitating towards. Right. This time again, it started because finance bill and the effect and direct impact it was going to have on the youth, people came out. And then thereafter, it moved into, okay, by the way, actually, let's demand more accountability for the things that are happening. Of course, because being leaderless, because of all these things, then you start having various camps emerging. That shows you, even if it wasn't about infiltration by nefarious forces, it just shows you that this is not homogenous. Yes, you're all thinking the same thing. You're all demanding the same thing, but your solution your formula towards the solution is different. One is using uh, pi D, the other one is using two pi R. You're yes. solving the circumference of a circle, yes. but you're approaching it differently. Yes. So how then would this come back together into one? Should it yeah. if I, come back together into one thing? I think the goal is unity, not oneness. Mm. Uh, the differences in approach, that, that makes it beautiful, makes it uh, diverse, and it gives us uh, more potential opportunities to explore different solutions and as it morphs there are people who will uh, specialize and go into like, different directions in terms of uh, what we think the problem areas are so i don't think it necessarily needs to be one thing because eventually we are in agreement that the one thing that unites us is we want a better Kenya for all of us. We want a Kenya where we have opportunities, where children have food in their bellies, where there's no corruption, where you can get a job in government regardless of your surname. Mm. So it doesn't necessarily... Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be us saying the same thing at the same time, but we're united by our problems. But we'll get to a point when we sort out these problems which are at the basic level, then I think it will continue uh, to grow outwards. Because as it stands... Uh, nothing has happened. It just seems as though um, it's become softer, mm. uh, but we are all still saying the same things. We're still saying, give us the IDs and the passports. We don't stop exporting us for cheap labor because what's the difference between that and slavery? Uh, we're saying, uh, stop using our money as though it were your private money. We're saying the people who took loans in our names should pay and did not tie them to a particular development project, should pay them the way they took it. So we're about all these things, we are in agreement. It's just that you'll find some people say, oh, now you need to have a leader. Some people, th those are the, I feel like those are su the superficial problems. Mm. These are things which can be sorted out without even listening to those voices. Yeah. Yeah. But you see, those challenges have always been there. Yes. Even before the finance bill protests, mm -hmm. those challenges were there. And there was, you know, a common understanding that, yeah, we need better governance. We right. Need, we need better leadership. Right. And it comes up every time there's an election that people are like, you know what, we are looking for a better better leader, better solution, better way of moving. We just don't see that we are recycling the same people. Right. But 
Yeah, this has helped yes. us to, to see that as well. Yes. If you do not have a sustained voice, yes, like we saw in May, June, then we may just get back into May, June last year. Right. Where, yeah, it was the same issues. People are saying we need IDs, we need passports, uh, we need uh, job opportunities, we need a government that serves the people, we need a government that listens, we need uh, our debts to be audited. And we need all those questions were there. Right. How do you sustain this? I think, uh, and I'm very optimistic in the when I say that the thing has not died in any way, shape, or form, in the sense that uh, we are currently organizing at the grassroots levels, at community centers, where you don't now have to be in Nairobi. Bungilamwana and she could attend it from anywhere. We're going through those bungas and first listening to the people. Um, when you have an opportunity, you have go and present this uh, petition, this form, wherever it is that you're going to be. And and we've seen that the government is also very keen because before we did Nane Nane, on uh, Wednesday and Tuesday, we had, uh, on Wednesday specifically, mm -hmm. we had about 10 uh, people's assemblies. And they were all violently dispersed. We'd have uh, cases of police raiding social justice centers, mm -hmm. the offices. We've had individuals who we had to even move from their houses because they've been directly targeted. So it cannot die because they structure at those community levels. Mm -hmm. At the social justice centers, there are very clear structures. And that's why we, we, I keep on insisting on you have to submit to a collective. You will not, at this point, for us to keep on going with the change that we're agitating for, you will not just be allowed to put out a poster because you are a graphic designer mm -hmm. or because you have 100,000 followers on, on X. Mm -hmm. We will not allow it. We've said, submit yourself to a collective go and say this is my idea, then the people are going to tell you whether or not we are marching forward. Because right now you've seen a lot of people are now putting out posters saying Mandaman yesterday, Mandaman today. Mm -hmm. Now you expect, and, and this is the expectation, that these leading voices should be there. So there's a young person who's saying, Casmo, uh, give me direction. Yep. And I'm like, no, we do not go for that protest because these are innocent children. And we've seen that the police force is not willing to deal with these people as unarmed citizens. You saw when we were in court on Friday, we spent the entire day. And I saw a lot of people asking, do these people look like anarchists? Mm -hmm. Because we, we actually occupied the courts. And the thing that the government did is, uh, they, what happened on Nane Nane, people were lifted off the streets very early. Mm -hmm. I know a friend who activated for only 20 minutes and then he called me, he's like, ah, man, we are lying flat food and we're, we're being taken to Central. Wow. However, they bundled up all the leading voices, about 104 young people who previously did not know each other. Mm -hmm. These people spent a night in the cell, so there's camaraderie, and okay. we spent an entire day in court. Now know so now other. we know each other, mm. and we know exactly how to find each other. So in my head, the way I see it, I was like, I previously thought that I was the only one who, was, who could make this noise. I've met a hundred more. So in, to, to me, it just has begun. Mm. It's just but begun. So we will organize at community level. We will not allow people to just use this movement for their, for their own clout, because there are people who are using it to chase clout. But how do you know that? When you say we will not allow, how do you know? How do you, how do you come to me and tell me that, no, 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 you, you, are, you have a different agenda. For I'll ask around. you what, part, what collective are you a part of? Why because should I, Why should I be in a collective? I think you should be in a collective if we're looking for the common good. So, for example, mm -hmm. you, would, you might have your ID. I have my ID, mm -hmm. but I'm fighting for people who do not have IDs. Uh, I, I, I can't just, you, you can't do it nefariously, uh, so to speak. There are people who just think that this is an agenda, like people who go to protest by themselves. Mm. That is also very welcome. But you will not lead, you will not ask the whole nation to occupy a thing. For example, like people who are saying occupy state house. Mm. People who are even saying occupy state house on Wednesday this week. Mm. You're saying it as who? I've seen a person who put out the poster mm. and now I ask them as who? Are you a part of a collective? Because you cannot now lead people's children to a place because we've said very clearly that there are various uh, grassroots organizations and they're very close. They're not too far. Mm. You can join. There are very many social justice centers. Go there because these are people who've been doing this for their entire lives. There are people who've just hop on, hopped onto this thing because it's the latest trend. So we, it's very easy to know these leading voices. We are saying you're one of the leading voices here on socials, you will use your socials responsibly. Because if we are holding these politicians to the same account, we cannot be playing. Because what about the people who've been benefiting from 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 uh, from these demonstrations? Mm. They are very, in effect, no different from these politicians because people have died and you've lined your, pocket with, your pockets with donor money. Mm. And we know them. So that's now why we are saying, and I can say this authoritatively because when I speak, I'm not speaking on my own. I'm speaking as part of a collective, a person who submitted themselves. And I was doing this as an 
as a solo person. Mm. They asked me, how can you do it alone? There's a group where you can find support, where you can find literature, where we can educate ourselves on political thought. Because uh, the challenge we had even when we were starting, people just thought Gen Zs are people who will get onto a space, throw a few F-bombs mm. uh, here and there, and then, and then go. Uh, but we are not politically vacuous. We know very well that this is what we want for the healthcare sector. These are the people we want to emulate. This is the kind of vision we have. Uh, and, and it works better if we submit ourselves to a collective. What are these collectives? Which one do you belong to? Uh, now, uh, there's a merger between uh, Madare Social Justice Center, Dandora, Kasarani, and uh, all over the, the country. Mm. And so, especially here in Nairobi, so that those are the ones which I'm submitting myself to uh, attend these meetings. And uh, and we talk at community level. So we go into the, the, the town, town halls and we sit down and we say, these are the things that uh, are sailing us. And these are the things, these are the actions that we intend to take. Um, yeah, so currently the, that, that collection is about 49 little collectives which have met in Nairobi. So social, social justice centers. Yes. Social justice centers and grassroots organizations. Mm -hmm. Yes, about 49 of them uh, that now are currently meeting and that will even be meeting. We'll be meeting later today to one debrief on Nane Nane and discuss steps forward. Can people belong to any other? Can, can I form a collective? Yes. So I can come out and actually release some social media posters and say, I am going to town on Wednesday. If you'd like, join me. But you have to tell us as who? As I, as Eric. Yes, as a going, citizen, yes, as an active oh, citizen. Oh, yeah. So as an active I want citizen. to go out and yes. I want to say that if you are interested, come and join me. Yes. We shall be meeting at Uhuru Park yes. on Wednesday at 2 p.m. Right. Right? Yes. So then you can ask me who I am. I, I'll, I'll tell you. Yeah. I'm Eric. I have every right to, to call out people just yeah. as, you might, as, as you do. You absolutely do. But then what will the question is the, is the agenda. And then now, yes, as much as you have the right, you also have the right to see whether or not we will join that protest. Yeah, so we, as a collective, it's not we're not gatekeeping or policing. We're looking for what has the best interest of the people at heart. Because I'll give you an example. That is gatekeeping. Oh, it is. Yes. Uh, whatever. Gatekeeping uh, isn't a negative thing. Yeah. In any setup, there has to be some form of order. Right. It, it, it just can't be held as skelter. You'll achieve nothing. That's, that's the... What? No, sorry, yeah. that's still not correct. Uh. You'll achieve a lot of noise. Right. But what it is that you purport and you claim to seek, yes. you will certainly not achieve. Right. You see, the <clears throat> I'm listening to you, and I'm listening to the one thing that I've heard consistently, and which makes a heck of a lot of sense, constantly referencing the Constitution. Yes. But beyond the Constitution, there's something called statecraft. Yes. This animal you are fighting is not an individual. It's also a collective. Yes. And this collective has a way in which it functions. Now, they seem to be taking time to understand how you function. Mm. Are you taking time to understand how they function? Now we are. Now we are. Now we are, in the sense that uh, mm. even, even the politicians who are coming up as, uh, as activists, for yeah. example, yeah. They, they seem to have very little effect to what their collective is. Uh, Big your politicians are a bit unreliable. Yes, that's what we're saying. If in the state, in the state machinery, in the state machinery, their no, activism seems no, to do very little no, against no, their movement. No, no, no. no. In you this know. country, no. No, no, no. The musical chairs that they play with every season and with every presidential yes. season, government season, tells you it's exactly what they are. I am actually talking about the mandarins in government yes you're talking ps you're yes. talking director you're talking what how government works right right there's a way in which it works yes and it's something that is studied and you need to understand it right in understanding it you may be able to now think about fostering change yes among the groupings that you have there are people who are political ambitions yes it is absolutely useless if your political ambition in my opinion and you don't understand how this thing you want to get into. Right. Forget the Kenyan politics, the way you say this. You, uh, for, for, put that aside. Yeah. We've seen how that way it gets us. Yes. Actually understanding, if today the president woke up and said, okay, this is what we're going to do. With these PSs, we want to bring in some 10 youths. Yes. 10. Yes. You'll be taken through some process of understanding how things work. Right. Wouldn't it be better if you actually understood it before you got there? It really would. Or among your people so you know this is what needs to be done. Because you can make a political appointment. Yes. But if someone doesn't understand statecraft, man, circles will be run around you. Absolutely. 
and very little will actually move in your docket. Yes. It's what happens with many ministers. Yes. Well, they come into the ideas, all right. Right. But it's not them who really run the show. It's true. They appear to, but they don't really run the show. Right. Now, the numbers that the group you belong to present, close to 35 and under, close to 70% of the voting population, they're, this is not a ticking time bomb. This is yeah. a ticking nuclear bomb. Right. Okay? Yeah. It is huge. Now, the focus on how these numbers can actually be utilized, should that not be at the center of your discussion? Not just arming it so that you are seen to be challenging the government, but seen to be actually seeking to understand how a better government ought to be and tooling yourselves for that better government. Right. And I think we, are, we actually are doing that with mm. our civic education programs, translating mm. bills and the constitution into various vernacular languages, trying to overcome uh, this, this monster that is tribalism. Yep. And, and you know, with this, the, this government of, of national unity, it sets, us, it sets the state back to those tribal cocoons because there seems to be a sort of appeasement uh, when it comes to, to those tribal allegiances. But there's something very impactful that you've said, CT, in terms of understanding. Uh, that the state and its craft, it, it's, a, it's a system that works so well mm -hmm. that even the people who seem like outliers do not affect its working, its inner workings. No. So anyone who's come out vocally, who's a politician, who's come out vocally and bashed the state, has mm -hmm. done nothing to how the state works. It's the same thing which now I'm saying we will need to consider that even if I, it, we need to figure out how the collective works and the, the edit we actually have such that if one outlier comes out with with these uh, new strange heretic ideas mm. it will not be able, it will not affect the general collective good because what we are looking for uh, in in vain terms is is a superior happiness of of our people the utmost superior life mm. for for the people that we represent so if you come out with a thing which we think is uh, is is nefarious if we know that this man is doing this thing for funding we will tell the people of the collective hey listen do not send your children there because i will give you a story where someone has fundraised mm -hmm. and we know that they have received the money and there's proof and instead of them uh, bringing the money to the collective they say approach a few individuals and ask them how many t-shirts do you want and do all these kinds of things just as politicians would Okay. And so that's part of, those are some of the individuals, because we know them. We've said, now, if you do not submit to the collective, go and take your games over there. Because what we're doing is, it involves lives. Anytime what, we go what effect does that have? Okay, so the person yeah. is fundraising. Yeah. They receive some support. Right. They purchase t-shirts. They yes. distribute t-shirts. Yes. It's only that they have not come to this collective yes. to report. Yeah. So what's wrong with that? You know, the beautiful thing is, these people have the money, but they do not have the influence or the people. It's the collectives that have the people. It's the collective that has the generals who are willing to set boots on the streets. Yeah, so you might have the money, but I dare you to go out there and bring a crowd of 100. See, herein you have a microcosm of what would happen yeah. if Gen Zs were in parliament, yeah. they were cabinet ministers, and even the president. Yes. This thing is just discussed. Yes. Right? And you would take us in direction that are even far more disastrous than what the president seems to be taking us to right now. I, I oppose it. Because we we we've not we've not participated in in mass murder. I'll tell you what. Right. Not yet. Yes. Because you have still have you haven't gotten the levers of power. Yes. So yes. What city is saying is that if you got yes. the levers yes. of power, yes. 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 and some of you would then be able to go and mobilize some resources right. to come and use on one side, right? And others. It's and a microcosm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I see exactly. What, what you do you mean. think these people whom we keep saying seem to be? Uh, Thickening our eyes and ears yes. with this morbid display of ill-gotten gains. What do you think that is? It's exactly that. Right. That's the limitation that they have currently. Yes. Imagine what they would do if they had a position. Right. I see. I see exactly what you mean. Yes. And that's why when we, I think, on the break, I was saying that we, it's taking a. If you if you hear us talk about it, mm. we talk about it in a, in a socialistic, almost communistic point of view when we're talking about the leaderlessness, the formlessness. But it's because the, the limelight is not on those people. All that people, those movements, yes. my brother, right, had leaders. Believe me. No, absolutely. And 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 there's not. Again, let me repeat something which I think is important to be said. Mm. Everything you've told us so far is actually good. Right. Nothing wrong with having begun at that leaderless thing because. I, we were of the opinion, you're not leaderless. The, the, at least that was my opinion. Right. There is nothing like a leaderless group. There may not be someone standing on a, on a rostrum saying, I am the leader. Right. There are influencers. Yes. There are dominant voices that are heard. Right, right. That's leadership. Yes, it is. 
It is, and it absolutely so. So I think, uh, and, and that's why we said when we started, we were united by the leading idea. Yeah. And, and they were amplified by the, the, the leading voices. And, and that, that will continue. Uh, and it, it permeates for, in so the various spaces. Yes, in the various spaces, it still continues. Mm. And that now when we are saying this is what the collective is, because the the people who uh, we've said, these are the people who we will give the, the limelight or whatever, uh, are people who want the utmost good for the people, for the collective. And that's what, part of even what we are carrying and we are saying, we will not allow corruption amongst our ranks, just the same way we do not allow it in government, because that microcosm that you've talked about, which mm -hmm. is a very clear depiction of, uh, of, of things as they are and things to come, uh, if we are going to expect that of the politicians, if we let it rain free here, and the struggle just continues with us knowing these people and, and, and fostering them and just saying, oh, now currently they're part of the struggle. What if the struggle runs for eight years? Now we have a rich person uh, who's only who thing, has been struggling. Yes, who was in the struggle. Now when they get in there, they're just going for the, for, for the kill. Accountability both ways. Yes. Accountability within and, and without. And without. Absolutely. And what I hear you saying is now increasing civic awareness, using those spaces and opportunity to create more awareness on what needs to happen. Yes. For example, IBC reconstitution is going to happen. Then you'll need to register as voters, those that didn't, the 8 million plus that were, uh, should have registered as voters. Right. Make sure that the register as voters. Make sure then that you encourage more and more people. There. I, I'm seeing a lot of interesting things. Accountability, for example, people just going and looking at Auditor General's reports. Yes and uh, control of budget reports and saying, so this is what we are digging out of this and exposing these things. It creates more awareness. And I think it's a good thing. It is. It is. I have people who now just have made it their, their, their life's mission to give us, tell us an update. Mm. These are the public participation things for all the bills that are going to be tabled. Someone just gives us a proper schedule. Yep. People who just said, I'll take this particular ministry. Uh, a guy is like Professor, and now we are asking how we're going to help, that now we are going to harass uh, Be talk next. We want our IDs out. Mm. We signed a petition uh, when we were in court, Juzi, on Friday mm. uh, for IABC. So we are doing this thing and it uh, we will we'll, we'll, we'll match on yes keep doing it right accountability both ends that's right Kasmo Bakore is an activist he's a youth he's been here he's been our guest time for news and into the next conversation it's 8 a.m